Namaskar. This is Dr. Alok Roy from Medica Calcutta. And like every weekend, every Saturday, we bring you health tips under the banner of Health is the Ultimate Wealth. Two weeks back, we had Dr. Alan Tripathi, who is uh, our vice chairman and a very famous neurosurgeon of Eastern India. He does a lot of surgeries for the brain and spine and etc. So we had discussion with him about the backache. What causes backache? And he gave us uh, some tips. He was saying that uh, the backache, the kind of things which you can have, one can have is backache, neck pain, limb pain from spine due to nerve compression and irritation. And he had enumerated a lot of causes. He said bad posture, prolonged working with computer, prolonged sedentary posture, uh, unaccustomed weight lifting and obesity, weak bones, etc., injury, etc. And he said, what is the purpose of spine? He said spine is there for stability, mobility, and for flexibility and range of motion. He pointed out very, very clearly, he was like a school teacher who pointed out that uh, we have a uh, three regions in the spine, the neck, the thorax, and below that is the lumbar, which supports our lower back or our hip. And he said that the maximum movement happens in neck and in the lumbar spine. And that because the maximum movement happens there, those are the source of pain. And he gave a lot of background that how to treat it and all that. Today, we got Deepika Mishra. Dr. Deepika Mishra is a very senior physiotherapist with us, has been with us for a long time. And uh, she is expert in giving you a back which is egg free. You don't get pain in your back if you listen to her. She has a lot to say. She has a lot to say about how to stay pain free in your back region. With this small reduction, I pass it on to Deepika for your presentation, Deepika, over to you. Thank you, sir. And good evening, everyone, and welcome to this webinar. First of all, uh, let me thank you all for joining us today. Myself, Deepika Mishra, I'm physiotherapy in Medical Super Specialty Hospital. Today, my talk is really particularly relevant on the role of physiotherapy in neck and back pain. So, as a physiotherapy, uh, as a physiotherapist, we are going to help the people to improve their movement and function of the joint and muscles. We can try to reduce their pain, improve their mobility, and we can advise how can they prevent their we can train how to uh, we can prevent how uh, risk of uh, hurting their back so in ancient time as a we can see as human is walking on four limbs so whole back is supported on the four limbs but slowly slowly due to transformations as we see that the quadrupedal is become a bipedal that means the whole spine is over your both legs now that for supporting this whole spine we need that much of strength in our muscles so if you are going to if you are going to see this spine it's not a straight it's having a different different curves like it is your cervical region it is a thoracic and it is a lumbar then there's a sacral and basically what is back it's starting from your neck and it's going up to your tailbone what happened most of the movements is occur on your cervical region and your lumbar region and there's a movement like flexion extension rotation some lateral flexion these are the movements going on this cervical 
and your lumbar region. And this the mid portion that is your, which is your thoracic region, it provides stability to our organs like your heart, lungs. So basically it provides stability. So what? So in this picture we can see there is a many muscles who are supporting to our neck, different different muscles. Some muscles basically are postural muscles and in the spine there is most of the muscles in the front of the spine and most of the muscles in the back of the spine. So we have that much of strength holding the spine. So if we're having a weak core, weak back muscle strength, so it's very difficult to manage. What happened when we're having a neck pain and back pain? So these are two things occur in your neck and your back. There may be an upper cross syndrome in the upper cervical and there is a lower cross syndrome at the lumbar region. In upper cross syndrome, you can see one group of muscle get tight and one group of muscle get weak in the neck region if there is any pain due to overuse of muscles. And in the lumbar region, same thing is happen. In the front, there is the abdominal muscles and in the back, there's a gluteal muscles, it get weak. And your longest muscle, which is your erector spinae muscle, the back of the spine, it get tight and the hip flexor, that is the iliocers get tight. So what happened? Due to this weakness, there is an imbalance in the muscles. What is low back pain? We also called as a, it's the lumbago. The low back pain is not only localized, it's not over, over the back only. It's sometimes it's going to your groin, sometimes it's going to your buttocks, sometimes it's going to your front of the thigh, and sometimes it's going to your back of the leg. So because the most of the body weight wear and most of the mobility, as we know, where is the more of the mobility is there, there may be a pain. People who are having uh, severe neck pain and back pain, they miss their work days. And sometimes due to this neck and back pain, uh, it's leading towards your disability in ages between 19 to 45. And the people who are working area like where they're having some heavy lifting work, they're having some occupational injuries during their workplace. The back pain is radiating, uh, is, uh, like it's radiating as we talked before, that it's radiating towards your groin, buttocks, back and the side of the thighs. And what is the sources of back pain? Sometimes it's due to your skeletal problem. That means sometimes you're having issue in vertebra. And sometimes it's due to visceral. Visceral means like if you're having kidney stone or something. So that pain is also radiating towards your back. So it should be your muscular pain. If we are going to overuse of muscles, so we're having a strain on your muscles and sometimes we're having ligament injury over our back. So this pain is basically aching in nature and there be a muscle spasm. The low back pain is most of mostly affected in ages between 25 to 60 years of age. And after 50s or 60, there may be a cause of disability. In UK, we can see as their lifestyle, how can their lifestyle people experience 70 to 85% of low back pain? What are the sources of low back pain? We know that if when we're having a neck pain and back pain, it may be due to vertebral problem, maybe due to thoracolumbar fascia, if we're having some facial problem, then sometimes Maybe it's due to ligament injury. Maybe it's due to some problem in the joints and maybe some due to disc, means your herniated disc 
and may be due to some any imbalance muscles that may be causes your low back pain. Here we see it can be a non-mechanical. There is a kidney stone, so it should be referred sometimes to back, this pain. And while lifting, we are not using our back properly. We bend directly forward and then lifted object. That time we get hurt. And if we fell down due to trauma, we having a back pain due to poor sitting position. Like people are sitting and they don't keep their back straight. That time we having a back pain and frequent bending forward. That means people are using mobile phones nowadays continuously and they forget the, how the spine gets slouched. So in this posture, slowly, slowly, we having start back pain. Degenerative conditions, that means due to arthritic changes as older age, facing a back pain. So as a physiotherapist, how can we help people? How can we explain to public like how you prevent your back pain? While lifting, people using directly the back muscles, but we tell them that they have to first squat and then using of their hip and knee muscles, they can lift the object and without twisting their body. This is a position. First, we have to bend forward. Then we can, using our hip and knee muscles, square, then using the hip and knee muscles, then slowly we can lift the object. Don't bend forward directly. That time, too much of stress over your back when you bend forward directly. This is the correct way of posture. First, we have to sit. <coughs> Back, then using your hip and knee muscles, then slowly, slowly getting up and get straight in this way. In standing, how we prevent back pain? In standing, the people are standing for a long period of time, like the people who are working in hospitals and they, like especially nurses and all, the whole day they have to stand. During that period, what happened? We forget how. So we have to first try to shift it the weight from one leg to another. In this way, we can prevent. And second thing, we have to tighten in between standing. We just occasionally we just tighten our abdomen. In that way, we can keep our back straight. And sometimes slowly, slowly, we just propping our feet. It the height of the stool, it should be around six to eight inches. In this way, just try to prop up. And this way we can prevent our back pain. This is a poor posture. Here the head should be forward. And we see there is a flat back. In this picture, we can see man stands straight. He balanced his posture. Here the head should be forward and the shoulder get rounded because there is a weak abdominal muscles. So this is a poor posture. Here is a protected abdomen. This is a wrong posture. And here the man is slouched. Head is forward. This is the right correct way of standing. Children using their school bags. This is the right way. How do they carry the school bag? They have to keep their back straight while carry the school bag. Sometimes they get slouched. In sitting, it's very common because most of the people who are IT desk worker, they have to sit for a long period of time. So in sitting, how we maintain our posture? We have to sit on the firm seat and keep our back straight. And we should bend our knees 90 degrees. And try to not slightly, don't look too much downward. It's like don't bend your neck. 
just try to nod your head and just keep your chest in like expand your chest and roll your hips forward in this way we can maintain our posture in sitting posture in this way we can keep our back straight here to slouch forward this is not good this is a correct way for sitting to tighten your abdomen keep your hip knee the leg should be 90 degree and keep your back straight during sleeping how we prevent we have to sleep on a firm and flat mattress during sleeping in side lying position we have to put one pillow under our head and one pillow between the legs to maintain our curve and in supine lying position we have to put one pillow below the head and under the knees in this way we can maintain our curve this is a good sleeping position the pillow is beneath the head and it's a very poor sleeping position because the pillow is beneath your head and your upper back there are few good and bad posture you can see here while driving the curve is slightly bent so in this time what we do we put one pillow over back the spine to maintain our curve and don't be slouched while sitting there we also have put one pillow the back and during bending should be squat and bend over hip and knees using of leg muscles to get up and while when doing some household activities during that time don't bend forward directly so what happened when the the doctor sent the patients to us that as a physiotherapy uh, we have some arts of assessment first we have to check the alignment of the patients in alignment we check the curves whether the curve is increased or whether it is decreased so after that we check the range of motion whether there is a flexion is there extension this is the limitation of movement due to severe pain and tissue mobility in tissue mobility we can see whether there is a tightness of muscle or not and lastly we go for strength of the muscles we check whether there is a weak abdominals whether the back of the muscles are weak or whether the hip muscles weak and check the length of the muscles so for that we go for some special test to isolate the conditions and after that assessing all the problems then we go for treatment in treatment part there is a ex first exercises in exercises there is a many techniques like we going for some strengthening exercises we go for some mobilizations some uh, manual traction technique by this way we teach some exercises to the patients and if the patient is came like with severe neck pain severe back pain it's like acute in that condition we put some some hot pack and some ift for reduce spasm and all so we use these this methods this is a short wave diathermy it's a depitting modality we using ift machine if there is any spasm we can use this if any radiating pain is there there is a lumbar traction is there the patient complaining of radiating pain if there is involvement of nerve root then in this way we can maintain the leg space it's a shock wave diathermy sometimes due to pain there is a small small knots form formation inside of our muscles so for breaking them and to reduce the tension on the muscle stiffness we can use the shock wave diathermy shock therapy and this is a recent advances at cupping method 
it is a suction force of pulling the blood in the skin and improve the circulation over there some dry needling methods we putting some needles inside the muscles and skin to break the knots and all and improve the circulation reduce the tension stiffness and it also reduce your pain here we can see the small small trigger point is there so for breaking them we also really please the by the method of myofascial release manually we can release these points in exercises there is a stretching we do some stretching exercises we do some strengthening exercises in stretching exercises this is for hamstring stretchings like the hamstring muscles which is the back of the leg like it gets tight sometimes the patient having a back pain due to this the muscle get tight so we have to stretches in this way and this is for stretching for your erector spinae muscle that is which is the back of the present of a back of the spine it's the longest muscles so in this way we can stretch it there are few common exercises you can see these all are spinal extension exercises so as per condition we go for treatment what happened the people seeing the youtube channels and all that and started doing exercises no first we have to consult your doctor first to consult your physiotherapist and in supervision you can go for all the exercises because everybody having a different body type so after consulting you can go for your exercises these all are bridging exercises it can strengthen your core and back muscles this is for improving your core muscles this all exercises is strengthen for your core and back muscles thank you dr <clears throat> deepika mishra thank you very much for uh, letting us know that what needs to be done in cases of uh, back ache now i have few questions to ask and i would like you to step by step answer that if that is okay with you first of all uh, friends what she has said that the spine is made up of two things first you have bone and around there you have muscles pain can come from the muscles and pain can come from the bone now she is saying that the cervical spine has a muscle around it which supports your head by the way the cervical muscles are second strongest muscle of the body after the leg muscles and they have to support your uh, head now when the there is an imbalance when some muscles become strong and some become weak and when you have a posture which is bad like when you bend your head and uh, work for long time then you get a pain in the neck literally deepika the pain in the neck when happens then which muscles become tight and which muscles become weak can you show us the picture of neck and tell us which muscles become tight and what is the knot in the neck muscles and what is the meaning of knot and how do you correct it sure sir yes yes basically yes. what happens sir so in cervical region we have a, our trapezius muscles it is a very largest muscles trapezius muscles start from where and ends where can you show it on your where is trapezius so this one this this from so behind the neck yes yes the side from the there. base of skull Five. to the shoulder that is trapezius yes this is a three fiber sir this is your upper fiber middle fiber low fiber so these have a three fibers so what happens when they get tight and the front the tight pectoralis which is the chest muscle in the front of the chest these both get tight and the why do they get tight uh, deepika yes because sir uh, when because these are the postural muscles and due to overuse of these muscles it how do we overuse it 
like the people who working whole day in like in front of computer whole day they using this muscle so those who keep their neck bent this muscles will become tight is it true yes sir okay and slowly slowly it goes under tension so there is a spasm suddenly the spasm happen and what is spasm spasm, spasm sir it is like Uh, like suddenly like what happened uh, some the we are overuse of this muscles and slowly slowly the muscles like sometimes the muscles will stop now i am not able to work so then what happened it get stop working so it get under spasm the movement get stop over there so what is not uh, this sir so not says like small small it's uh, like uh, it's uh, Uh, formation in the muscles due to tension there is a, some particular trigger points in our body so what happened due to tension it's get uh, due to lack of blood supply it slowly slowly formation inside the body so what happened this is all happened due to overuse of muscles it get okay. tight okay then how do we make it uh, uh, relax and uh, how do we improve uh, so we improve we need to improve circulation there isn't it yes sir so we we do some we do some methods like uh, we have to release manually also and we use some light needle therapy like here i show you mm-hmm. like this is the cupping method what happened the we find out the knots and put this cupping method and due to this like force we can pull the like blood into the skin then after that what happens slowly slowly that area get pain get the patient having reducing pain and then they feel stiffness get reduced so in this way we also reduce and there is a another way like dry needling therapy we putting needles inside the skin and we break the knot so and, before you go for these interventions can you tell me what are the simpler way like i have got a pain in the neck how are you going to help me in relieving the pain is a massage required not opening or hot fermentation or exercises what what is the best method of removing my neck pain so if it is like acute acute pain then we go for some like ice pack first we put some ice pack and so after should we put a ice pack or hot bag no sir if it is like uh, more than like 7 days in acute case we basically go for ice pack then after that if it is more than 7 days the patient don't ha huh, with ice pack we go for some modalities like ift ift is for mainly for your muscle spasm then after that if there is not the pain did not reduce then we started the hot pack we put some warm hot packs then after that we slowly slowly releasing with our hands we find out the points and then slowly slowly we reduce releasing that so, point so you what you are telling my viewers that in case of acute pain in the neck put the ice pack first reduce the pain ice pack will reduce the pain then if the spasm persists you will do ift ift is a current isn't it what is this ift means It's a medium frequency current, sir. So it's basically used for reducing the spasm of the muscles. Okay. So once the spasm is removed, now I have a pain relieved. I have got a spasm gone with the IFT. Now how do I prevent it? How do I prevent it from happening again? We have to maintain our posture. The one said that when we sit, when we uh, Uh, like uh, when we say then we using some pillows over the back and we keep our back straight always we start doing some exercises because like exercises is like prevention of a long term of pain like the patient so what is those what are those exercises for the neck so we started some strengthening exercises like like uh, uh, we go for some like if there is a pain severe pain no and once of my pain is gone my, you have given me a uh, cold app cold application you have given me ift i have no pain now 
but you i want to prevent my future so are there some isometric exercises which can be given to strengthen those muscles yes yes sir sure uh, we have some isometric exercises for our neck muscles and we started our for back we have what are those exercises so isometrics like uh, for neck muscles there is a different different positions like in this way we can pushing our head forward and this hand push back like we may keep our neck straight but still we start isometrics means without moving our joint we strengthen our muscles so it is only for the front or sideways also we can do no sir sideways like front we can do like this and for back muscles like this for sideways when this way and this way there is a many ways we can strengthen our neck good so uh, dr deepika has told us four ways of preventing neck pain she has said if you get a neck pain i will put ice pack on you so the blood rushes to your muscle muscle get some food and if you have not they she'll open it up she'll give you ift to take your pain away then she will teach you strengthening exercises for you to get rid of pain in future too fine now uh, how do we uh, let's go to the lumbar spine because if you remember correctly You say the lumbar spine. Let's go through the each posture which you mentioned. Can you go back to the exercise uh, and I will ask you questions. Please explain to my viewers how to do what exercise means what and which muscle is strengthened. So while she is reaching there, she has told us very clearly that why do you get a back pain? You get a back pain because certain muscles are weak. Your abdominal muscles are weak, and your erector spine, the muscle which is behind your back. that is very strong and your uh, uh, gluteus uh, can be strong or weak now this imbalance of strong and weak pulls uh, your body to one side when it pulls the body to one side those muscles go into spasm so what happen in your neck happens in those muscles in the back now tell me the first is that uh, uh, the uh, in a dog position why are you arching your back the left first left yes yes what does it mean and why yeah in this way we can st- like uh, strengthen our the back muscles which is erector spinae and in this way we can use the abdominal muscles this a- so you are balancing here both back. erector and back muscles erector spinae is your erector means erect spine means spine which keeps your spine erect that um, uh, these two exercises up and down will keep abdominal strong and erector spine so both muscles are strong and you have a straight back am i right yes sir now the plank one at the bottom at the bottom below yeah this works side what does it do sir it's basically for you like core muscles and in this muscles what is core muscle what does you mean a core muscle core muscle is so like abdominal muscles which uh, like in the front of the spine what happened the obese like obese people they having a weak core so sometimes it get weak so the like the spine going forward like in this way we can t- strengthen these core muscles to keep our back straight and in this way we also strengthen our your buttocks like this hip muscles so back. so this is the plank position am i right yes sir where you are on your elbows back straight Uh, you are push down a little bit and with your on your toes keep yourself straight this can only happen and hold on here for some time this takes care of your abdominal muscles and back muscles both am i right yes sir upper back also upper back also so this makes your muscle strong from both uh, uh, abdominal side and erector spinae side so you are held well in a cage of your spine being straight fine let us go above that that where is somebody raising her back up what is this position and which muscle it helps so this is your like spinal extension exercises like in this muscle what happened we can strengthen our back muscles like the patients uh, who having like uh, pivd or the in like uh, indigenative cases the patients having 
this back pain. So in that case, we use these exercises to keep up our back. Yeah, so what she's saying, Dr. Deepika is saying, that those who have got a, a degenerative spines, they need to have strong muscles to hold the spine in place. And by this exercise, of raising yourself, your head, and arching your back, keeps your back muscles strong. Am I right, Deepika? Yes, sir. And that is a, a, a good thing to take. Can you go back to the same one, please? Yeah. On the right side, you have got a man who's uh, raising his leg and uh, hands. Can you just explain this, what this exercise is? Step this, by step. Yes, sir. In this way, this is a leg radiation. Like in first, this is the starting position. First, we have to straight our elbow, like uh, shoulders and bend our hip knee, 90, 90. In this way, first we do the, like diagonally we can do. If one, your right side is, hand is going up. So left leg is going to be bent. So in this way, we can also strengthen our core muscles. Okay, okay, all right. Now, let's go uh, to a, a previous slide which you had shown of strengthening. Can we, uh, what is this slide? So, these all are stretching exercises. Like what happened, sometimes back pain is due to some tightness also. Like if the these back hamstring muscles, when it gets tight, because it's like it's the longest muscles with the back of the leg. So, sometimes it gets tight, we're having a back pain. So we uh, like uh, explain to patients that start stretching of these muscles. In this way, we can stretch these hamstring muscles. These all are stretching exercises. Mm. Okay. Now tell me that uh, uh, stretching, we are uh, raising legs and bringing our uh, of this, uh, feet down. So when we push on the feet down, this muscle gets stretched. Right, and you mean to say that a lot of backache could be because of leg muscles. All right, right. Can we go back to those uh, uh, before slide, after that, after this, after this, this slide, yes. What is this slide on the top where she's raising herself from the uh, floor? Uh, this is, is a bridging exercises. In this way, we can, while doing these exercises, we have to keep some points in the mind. Like first, we have to tighten our tummy and we have to tighten our buttocks. And it, with the pre, the heel should be pressed down. In this pushing down, we can lift it up. In this way, we can strengthen our core and back muscles. Okay. So these are again your strengthening of core muscles. Yes. Now, let's go to the side planks, you know, the slight planks on the right side. Yeah. Yes. In side plank, this is a like starting position. In this way, yes, definitely it's for your upper back and for your back and core. In this way, there is also, we can uh, improve our strength of your hip muscles also in this side plank. Okay. Now, uh, uh, what is this uh, bird dog position? Bird dog position in this position, like this is our starting position. First, we have to bend and hip knee should be flexed. And in first, we have to straighten our one hand and the opposite leg. In this position, we doing again and again. So here we also have... A, yeah, we are going to strengthen our abdominal muscles and your this area back muscles. So, so and below that, what is that below it? Yes, this is a Russian twist. Uh, it's for like uh, our core, especially this core muscle, Russian twist. We also strengthen okay. our obliques. Okay, okay. So, colleague, uh, friends, Deepika has just explained us various ways of strengthening your core muscles. Your core muscles are strength central to all your postures, all your aches and pains in life. Not only they are central to your aches and pains of back in your life, they're also extremely important for your balance in life. A lot of people who are above 60 and 70, they fall because their core muscle is weak and they, they have a balancing problem. Am I right, Deepika? Yes, sir. 
So if you strengthen your core muscles, whatever she has said, that uh, bird position, bird dog position, plank position, side plank position, Russian twist on both sides, and uh, all this is given to give you stability to your core. And that will keep you pain-free and that will also keep you stable. So suppose you rakhla gaya, aap, aapke palm mein kuch phas gaya. Agar core muscle aapki strong hai, then you can immediately get up, you can jump out of it. Or you will not fall. If you fall also, you'll fall slowly. But if your core muscles are not strong, you'll fall very strong. So, in brief, what we have, we have certain set of muscles around our neck, around our uh, spine. Now, the neck muscles, when we have a wrong posture, she explained, so many postures, when you drive the car, you sit like this. When you sit on the computer, you sit like this. You constantly bend forward. So your neck muscles go into spasm. And there are various ways. When they're acute, use a ice pack. When they're old and chronic, use hot water bag or whatever bag. There's IFT, various ways, traction, this, that, to relieve you of that. But the intent is not, of course, to relieve your pain. But intent here of this webinar is to tell you that prevent it. Don't have a backache. And the don't have a backache has three mantras primarily. Good posture, strong muscles, and regular exercises. And these three will keep you healthy and going and backache free. Of course, there are a few questions uh, which I, I like to take now. Uh, that for Deepika, the question is for how long should we hold our core exercises daily? How long should work daily? Suppose, suppose, suppose I am uh, 40. Then tell for 40, tell for 50, then for 60. Three age group, you tell us how long we should exercise every day for my, our core and for our uh, relaxation exercise. Like, uh, if you are young, so you have to do the exercises twice daily. No problem. You have to do exercises regularly. And for exercises, there is like uh, you have to do exercises, particularly that is for 10 repetitions. You have to hold that exercises for 10 seconds. Like in this way, we can do the exercises twice daily. Like young, uh, 25 to like 40s, they can do. Deepika, but, who has time to do it daily? Are Baba, ek bar karne se chalega nahi kya? Yes, sir. do bar ka samay hai? Ek hi bar kar le aadmi, to hum khush jati. So at least once a daily. So you are saying that how long, what is the core size? How long should I be on a plank position? How long should I hold it? Is one minute good time to hold? No, it's for like 10 seconds, sir, for strengthening. 10 seconds minimum. Yes. But minimum. if they can do it for one minute and they must repeat it 10 times. 10 times. Okay. Yes. So what is she saying that to develop a muscle, do it once daily and one stretch, do it 10 seconds. See what happens when you have a good core. And when you exercise regularly, initially it will be 10 seconds, then it will become 20 seconds, then 30 seconds. A time will come when you'll hold your core for a minute and a half. Trust me, you are right. And anybody can do it. 60 year old can do it, 70 year old can do it, 20 year old can do it, 40 year old can do it. And all those age group, if you hold your core muscles for a minute and a half, you are right and you are stable. You will have no backache ever. And if you maintain a good posture, strengthen it regularly and uh, exercise regularly, you will stay healthy. Thank you friends for joining us. And uh, if uh, any question you have not answered, would be happy to answer. And uh, uh, there is a acupuncture. Please, uh, what do you mean acu uh, uh, acupuncture? Can you say a few words, Deepika? Yes, sir, that is a dry needling. Can you show up what is what what is the principle of dry needling? It's, uh, it's basically what happened. We can insert the needles in the muscles or the skin to break down the knots. And after that, what happened? We can reduce the tension over there. Yeah, slowly, slowly. So when you put this needle, the knot, which is the low vascular supply, see, mm -hmm. knot is I, I guess is because the muscle is shortened and the blood supply is fallen. 
so this dry needling is uh, it creates a increased vascularity in that knot and the, because of that the pain gets relieved and muscle stretches is that right yes sir we basically this is the principle so yes. my friend the principle of dry needling uh, what you call acupuncture because muscles they become so tight they become very knotty knotty n o t t y k n o t t y and that knot is a, is a is a low vascular structure to the less blood supply when they push needle inside that a needle acts as a stimulant for blood to flow and when blood flows it brings heat with it and the blood and heat both make it relaxed and muscle regains its strength and recovers from rather less supply am i right yes sir okay so uh, these are the few answers and uh, uh our series uh, webinar series where we want you to learn few things from us and stay healthy and happy i'm extremely thankful to bengal chamber of commerce for uh, being our stakeholder and rotary club of calcutta viana for joining us with this we thank uh, dr deepika mishra for giving us a very very illustrative examples of how to stay back at free thanks to you all for joining us join us again next week we'll bring something very interesting again which will be of relevance to you and uh, next sunday saturday 5:30 let's meet again thank you namaskar have a nice weekend thank you deepika thank you, thank you.